Hi, this is Sunil Bharatiya, and today we have with us Clyde Superseed, uh, SVP and GM of Training and Certification at the Linux Foundation. Clyde, first of all, it's glad to have you here. Thanks for having me, Swapna. Uh, can you tell us a bit about what is the primary goal of Training and Certification Division at the Linux Foundation? Sure. It's, uh, it, it, it's an interesting thing, right? Because if you look at the history of open source, the first wave of folks were very DIYers, right? They would jump in, they would read the docs, they would get on IRC channels. Uh, and there was a, a little bit of a sense that that was how you, you know, th that was the sort of true way in which you get into open source is by, you know, by figuring it out yourself. But of course, that's never been true for software in general, right? I mean, people always get trained right on commercial products they have whole companies have whole uh, market enablement arms and so one of the things that we identified a few years ago is that there was this gap between amazing quality open source products that were changing how computing gets done and then the talent development side of things right how do we create on ramps for talent in an age of open source where you don't necessarily have the same go-to-market commercial organizations uh, making sure that people get uh, trained and up to speed technically on, on the on the new software products. And so that's a piece where we're really trying to fill is that entry level talent uh, gap. Right. Also, I have seen that uh, there is no dearth of uh, all these training, but mostly they are specific to a specific vendor and their product. So when it comes to vendor neutral technologies, core technologies, that is where there is a huge kind of, you know, <coughs> void where you can not find, I think that's what Linux Foundation is doing there, if I'm not wrong. Correct, right? It's for the core technologies, right? And so, you know, we always say, look, you need a, the starting point that's most useful to most people is vendor neutral understanding of the core technologies and at the entry level, right? We really try to focus on entry level talent because we recognize that the commercial ecosystems are, are really valuable, right? When you get up into the intermediate and advanced layers, by definition, you're working with specific tool sets and it's appropriate for you to move into that uh, more uh, tool specific uh, types of training. But when you're getting started, you really need that broadest possible foundation because you don't know if you're going to be working in an Azure shop. You don't know if you're going to be in a GCC, uh, GCP shop. You don't know which distro you're going to be using. And so, you know, the broader the footprint that we can give people to start with, the better. Right? And that's kind of where we focus is entry-level vendor-neutral talent so that people are best prepared for the maximum number of career opportunities. And uh, what kind of demand is there for um, especially entry-level, as you also said, you know, <laughs> uh, the way we learned was, you know, uh, we just learned everything ourselves, you know, on the, on the internet, fine, from here, there are really a lot of books, download stuff, get CDs. So, um, uh, but in today's world where everybody's connected, so what kind of demand is there for this very basic entry-level, you know, uh, for especially in the open source space. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll give you a good example. Swap now. We just uh, this past week actually announced uh, the one millionth enrollment in our free Intro to Linux course on edX, uh, which you know kind of blows my mind, right? That we were able to get out on the internet and find one million people from two hundred and twenty-two different countries who wanted to learn the fundamentals of Linux and what it is and what it can do. I think that really shines a good light on just how broad the base is, and I think importantly how global the base is. Right? There's a lot of there's a lot better on ramps into a techno, uh, technology career if you're in North America or if you're in Western Europe. Right? There's a more mature ecosystem with different entry points. I think when you look globally, there are a lot fewer of those, and so that part of our mission to say, hey, this is not a isolated technical challenge for, you know, for the US or for France or for Germany. This is a global technical challenge. And we're seeing that demand, right? The second highest number of enrollments in our free Linux course is from India. And so that you know, there's a broad, deep move to this. And uh, you know, the example I've taken to given, giving recently is uh, with the uh, pandemic of 2020, the uh, my favorite local Chinese restaurant, which is a small mom and pop operation, shut down. And when they came back online, they came back online with a website and an online ordering system. And I, I asked, I said, how did you guys 
get that set up. And she said, oh, you know, we had to go hire somebody, right? We had to go figure out how to make a mom and pop strip mall Chinese food business into a web enabled business. And uh, you know, so it gives an example of the breadth to which you know, that also is increasingly true that every business is now a technology business. One more thing that people do not uh, give credit or recognize is that uh, despite these tough times, uh, open source technologies, the way they have democratized, because building your own stack is so hard, so expensive. At the same time, if you want to start a business having your own data center, so cloud and open source, uh, you gave example and same is the case with uh, my Indian store uh, because of this social distancing or we did not want to go out. Now, they never did that, but suddenly everything was available online. You can just go online, place the order, and they would deliver to the home. What enabled them to move quickly was all these, you know, democratization that has happened here. And at the same time, uh, there is uh, enough talent pool that, you know, you guys help create who can actually handle that kind of work because other, suddenly there is a surge. So, uh, but when we do look at all these technologies, you know, we hear buzzwords like Kubernetes and all those things, they are intimidating. So for somebody who is kind of new, who will, who wants to get into that, but they have no experience in any of these technologies, any of these industries, how should they get started? That's a great point, Swapna. And, and actually that's, that exact challenge is why we recently announced the creation of a new entry level exam for what we call IT associates. And it's born of this recognition that, you know, for those of us in tech, yeah, Getting started seems like a fairly obvious thing, right? You, you, you know, you learn the basic operating system, you get familiar with the cloud technologies, uh, and you start thinking about the problems of stability and scale and security. Uh, if you're on the outside looking in and you have never learned this stuff, you don't know anybody in your community or your family who does it, uh, it is a very tall ask to say, hey, go start by getting certified in Linux or go, go start by getting a Azure certification or an AWS certification. It's just too much to ask for folks, right? You need some intermediate step to help people build the confidence that this is something that they can do, even if they don't have a support system and a network and a set of role models around them. And so we developed this program to say, can we create a, you know, a pre-professional certification exam that demonstrates that somebody has understood the fundamental concepts in terms of you know, the new cloud infrastructure, the microservice infrastructure, the cloud native infrastructure, uh, without forcing them to get to the finish line of, hey, I'm a competent cloud administrator, right? You just It's too much to ask folks to get in one go. It's too much in terms of the time. It's too much in terms of the level of effort without giving them some midpoint to say, okay, I feel confident that I can do this. I have the aptitude. I've been able to demonstrate that I can learn some of the basics. And, and that really is the audience that we're targeting with this, is folks who are coming from the outside, new to IT, who understand the potential and they can see themselves doing it. But we have to give them somewhere to hang their hat to say, okay, it's going to be fine. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot to learn. But I've shown that I can do it, right? I've shown the competence. I've shown the aptitude. And potentially I've shown enough to start getting some, uh, you know, uh, a look from a potential employer or from a, for a potential internship, but some entry rung in the ladder. Uh, and that's really what we're going after is a recognition of it can be a daunting task to try to get somebody all the way up to technical competence and that a, a stepping stone, a pre-professional stepping stone could really help make IT seem like a more realistic career option for a lot of folks. If you look at open source world, uh, uh, we all know a lot of core developer maintainers, they have no formal training. You know, someone was a doctor and suddenly they became maintainer of a major open source project. But when we look at this whole serving the enterprise space, why do we need formal training when, you know, you can just go online and learn everything on your own? <laughs> it's true. It, it, it reminds me of the last time I went to the doctor and uh, the, he had a cartoon printed out on the wall that said that uh, your Google search is not as good as my medical degree. <laughs> this is not a technology problem. The, you know, the inf explosion of information on the internet has made it possible to access uh, a lot of knowledge and a lot of information. What it 
doesn't do is make it easy and structured. And so there are always going to be folks, uh, just like there have been historically, who can go between the documentation and the discussion boards and the YouTube videos, they can figure it out for themselves. And our perspective is that's great. Those people probably don't need our help, but they're probably in the single digits, if you think of the percentages of people. Uh, most folks need more structure. They need more guidance. They need labs that they can get through that have a solution. And if they get stuck, they can go say, oh, that's uh, just, I forgot to open that port. And so the training really, it's not that training brings any dramatic new uh, you know, content to the table. What it does is it creates a structured path to help people go through a structured set of exercises and the, and the availability of help if you get stuck, right? So we have discussion boards and different forums for providing that help. Uh, it's not that you couldn't do it by scouring the web. It's that the vast majority of people that takes an already daunting topic and makes it just impossible, right? It's, we've got to put the breadcrumbs down to help people find it. And that's where we focus is saying, look, this information exists, but it doesn't exist in a way that most people can digest it and can wrap their head around and stay committed to a path of getting from here to there, right? The training program, that's what it does. It helps people find a path to get where they want to go without having to invent the path by themselves. Right. Also, the, the, the reason you need this structure training is you're going to serve a particular industry. You are not just learning something because there's a big difference in learn, learning about something versus serving a specific industry. There are a lot of challenges. There are a lot of set of uh, uh, procedures. So, yes, it does play a very big role. You can learn everything self, but you should go through that specific training to prepare yourself to for that job. Uh, now, if you look at Linux Foundation, you guys do a lot of uh, work in this uh training uh, space. Can you kind of just uh, uh, give a few examples of the work that you're doing to kind of help the talent gap? Because Linux Foundation also comes up with the report every year where we see there is such a huge gap between supply and demand of talent. Correct. And, and we're actually going to publish our newest version, the 2020 version of that report, the open source jobs report, uh, shortly. And I'll, I'll give you sort of a sneak preview, right? Even with the pandemic going on, more than 50% of the respondents said that they're going to be hiring entry-level talent. And it's, it, it's really because there's only, so many, there's only so many times you can go to LinkedIn and try to poach somebody, right? Companies have realized that it's a zero-sum game. You're going to have to build and grow talent in-house, especially if you're taking legacy loads and trying to make them cloud native and move them into the cloud and right? getting brand new people in is, is not necessarily going to be the best way to make that happen and so as lf what we're doing is trying to say you need a portfolio of solutions to try to help uh, fill that gap in the market right so we do things like the intro to linux course i was talking about which is available for free on the web anybody can go sign up for it you don't have to pay a dime uh, we have new exams like this entry level certification exam. We've got you know instructor led training for folks who want that. We've got affordable e learning options for folks who want that. We've recently put together some boot camp type programs to train people to have that extra layer of instructor support. Uh, and so we recognize that there's no one silver bullet, right? It's a portfolio of different uh, actions to try to figure out. Different people are in different places. How do we create solutions for them to find a path to get where they want to go that have the right level of intensity, the right level of support, and importantly, the right level of availability and the right affordability, because that in reality is a barrier for a lot of folks, right? Not everybody can drop $10,000 on a coding bootcamp. That also made me think that how do you also help individuals, you know, to kind of meet their own educational goal? Because as you said, there are, sometimes you need so many resources there. Yeah, you know, so the structured training programs help, right? Because it helps folks see that this is a sequence in which they can um, learn and grow. Uh, it's also helpful for them to just get into the discussion boards that we provide and uh, be able to engage not just with the instructors, but with the other people in the programs to figure out these are the challenges we're all facing. You know, I'm not alone in this. Uh, other people are stuck in similar places. And so helping folks, you know, just like we were talking about with the um, with the new certified IT associate, helping folks see that that they're not alone and helping them get 
help and making it easy for them to access that help is an important part of just making it accessible. I mean, ultimately what we want is create a pathway where people can succeed, right? Where it's not the barrier to entries come down. And a lot of that is around building the community, the affordability, the accessibility, uh, and uh, uh, coming from a place, you know, where we are fortunate in the foundation that, you know, we're a nonprofit folks get that we're not trying to appease shareholders in this. We really are a mission driven organization. And I think that also helps. That helps give people the confidence that the agenda here really is to expand the talent pool. It really is to try to help folks, you know, great. I think the, the mantra for my team has been, you know, great code alone can't change the world, right? <laughs> you, you still need people in there implementing systems, implementing solutions, providing support. And so, uh, you know, the open source revolution does need a a talent revolution to help sustain it. Now, uh, we did touch upon these points at a different point, but do you need to have some specific qualification or you should be in a specific location or you should be of certain age to join these uh, training programs? No, you know, we really do make this, <laughs> as my training director uh, likes to joke, it, you know, we try to go down to the what is the file level, right? It, it really does start. And if you look at our intro to Linux course, for instance, it really starts by saying, what's an OS? What's a file? How do you install it? Uh, and, the, you know, the beauty of doing the stuff as self-paced learning is it allows people to skip ahead, right? If you know it already, you just look at the outline and you can figure out, oh, okay, chapter seven is where my journey needs to start, right? So it allows people to opt in to a training program and find their level. Uh, but it also allows people who truly are new to this to find an accessible path in. Awesome. Clyde, thank you so much uh, for taking time out today and talk about this training and certification. And I look forward to talk to you again. Thank you. Same here. I really appreciate you having me, Swapnil.